Hi everybody, we're gonna do a Q&A today. We're gonna to do some styling for an olive green sport coat. We're gonna use this one as the example. So this is a Model 3 sport coat from this season's collection at the Armory. It is made in a very lightweight wool hop sack. And it's got this great combination of an olive base, but with a lot of other color in there. Like there's a little bit of taupe, there's a little bit of honey in there. And it's been arranged in this quite nice check. You know, nice in that like the pattern itself is quite fine, like it's not strong and in your face, um, but it's complex too. And it's a nice scale, like it's not too tight, not too dense. See, the nice thing about when you have like these kind of finer, not so strong checks is it gives you a lot of freedom to match it with other scales of patterns and other colors as well. So let's have a look, okay? Now, you know, traditionally on the channel, we've always kind of focused on ready to wear stuff. But I thought for today, it might be nice to actually go to the cloth books instead and just have a look at some interesting stuff that, you know, wouldn't necessarily be available ready to wear, but we could make for you MTO. Um, Cause I, I really like this stuff. And this stuff is stuff that you, we just can't really keep it as a stock piece cause it wouldn't necessarily be popular enough, but it could be great for the right person. Let's start here. We're looking at Ascot Chang's vintage fabric and, uh, I love this, this kind of canary yellow. You know, I'm a big fan of off-white anyways, but actually with this olive, I think that canary yellow looks wonderful. That's one option. I like this too. Not something you see too often, like a kind of co almost coffee brown shade in a herring bone. I think that's lovely as a match to this sport coat. Um, I'll show you a few other things. Check this out. I like the idea of this. You know, earlier I was saying, well, you know, the scale of the patterns are important. So you see, like, you've got this really quite tight, um, almost like a graph check thing going on on the shirt in a very gray, slightly bluish gray tone. And it looks really good with the olive as well. Plus, because all these checks are different scales, um, they don't clash. In fact, if you imagine that, and then you use use something like this, like a navy tie. See, then you can really kind of find some balance and harmony with those two things, with those three things together as well. But we will come back to accessories in a second. I just want to go through the shirts with you guys first. Okay, so that's another interesting one. And then, I really like this one. This one's funny. This book is interesting. This is all vintage linens and there's some really crazy stuff in here. This I'm a big fan of. Like you've got gold, you've got gray, you've got purple for some weird reason, but it just works, it works really well. I like it a lot. And you could get away with this, with these two fabrics together. Um, I wish I had a purple tie handy, sadly I don't, but this could be quite nice with something like this, a burgundy. Oh, just to pick up that purple a little bit as well. Really interesting way to wear it. Alrighty. Now, that's the 100 hand selection. So, I'm sorry, that's the Ascot Chang selection. So with the Ascot Chang selection, we typically do these fabrics in things like our holiday shirt, which is our one piece collar shirt that I'm wearing right now. Um, but of course, we can also do other models of shirts for you as well. Um, now let's have a look at 100 hands. And 100 hands is where we tend to do our classic spread collars, where we tend to do our button down shirts, um, and they do a wonderful job. They have their own fabric selection. So as I mentioned earlier, Ecru is a color I absolutely love, and 100 Hands has one of the best selections of Ecru I've ever come across. There are just so many different shades of like pale off white coming towards yellow. And these are great colors of shirts to have in any situation, let alone with this olive sport coat. Um, surprisingly, I have not pulled out a blue shirting yet. So there's one here in particular I really, really like. Um, this 100 hands cotton linen here. You know, it's got a nice texture to it, a little bit of sheen. And when you put it up against that, you know, it, it sits really, really well together. It's because this blue actually has a lot of white in it. Um, so there's like a certain harmony between like the lightness in the check and that uneven lightness in the shirting fabric as well. I love these two things together. 
And then, what else we got here? Slowly turning this desk into more and more of a mess. Um, ah, there we go. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Apologies, didn't mean to waste everybody's time. This might have to go get out in the editing room. And then also, I like these, like plain light blue twills, like that. Excuse me. Plain light blue twills like that, especially ones like these that have a little bit of a yellow tone to it. You see like this one has a very blue tone to it in comparison. Whereas this one is ever so slightly yellow, but I, I think a really lovely, lovely color. And in fact, imagine that, right? And you're thinking, okay, well, I want to like make the most of that yellow tone in that blue. Then you can mix in accessories like this, right? Champagne colors, kind of more orangey colors. This is lovely too, like a burnt orange color. Sticks out really well against that blue. Alrighty, why don't we look at some trousers now? What would you, what sort of trouser colors would you put with this? Um, I actually, although you can wear this casually, of course, you can wear blue jeans, you can wear polos. In fact, we'll show you that real fast. Um, the obligatory blue jeans shot. So here is the sport coat with the blue jeans, with a white polo. Easy, great, fantastic. But I actually like it a little bit better dressed up. You know, the fabric is actually very, it can be very crisp and neat. And so it can look really, really good if you're gonna pair it with a pair of wool trousers and with a necktie. When it comes to that sort of thing, um, you know, let's start with this one. This is probably my favorite book for trousers, period. The Drapper's Ascot book. I wear a ton of this stuff and it's always been kind of like a good trousers sidekick for me. Um, there's two colors in here that I think really, really work and are somewhat unusual. You don't find them for so much from other mills. It's these two, the taupe and then the mushroom, right? They, they both have that sort of grayish look to them, but they're quite yellow. And, you know, with these sorts of things, like let's bring back some shirts. You could imagine, for instance, on the mushroom, Something like that. Yeah. Or on that taupey sort of color. You can imagine even something like that. Quite lovely as well. And then other trouser choices. Fresco 3 is not, is not a bad book for trousers too. I use it sometimes. Um, they do like a, a tighter, denser and lighter weight at the beginning. Uh, I think I prefer the four ply, but if you like a thinner cloth, this is really good too. Um, and they do a really nice pale gray. Like their pale gray has a really nice unevenness to it that just makes it feel a little bit more interesting. This goes great. I love that. I also love khakis, especially wool khakis. Wool khaki is something that is, often missing in a man's wardrobe. Like surprisingly, um, people have a lot of cotton chinos and these sorts of colors, but they rarely have it in wool. And a nice wool in a khaki color, um, because it's so crisp, uh, is, a, is a lovely thing to have. Surprisingly useful if you're wearing it even with like a navy blazer and so on and so forth. Also, Fresco 3 has the advantage of having this particular color, which is very, very unusual. This is like a very, very, very pale olive. You know, it's somewhere between like an olive, a taupe, and a gray. But really interesting when you put it with a, with a deep olive like this particular sport coat. So I love that together as well. Alrighty, finally, let's look at some, um, let's see. Let's look at a couple of necktie accessories. So let's go back to this, just because I really like this particular color and because it's also somewhat reflective of a gray. So we've got this very pale taupe grayish color with an olive sport coat. What are the sorts of neckties you could be thinking about here? Oops, dropping everything. Yeah. So um, for me, I, I like navy the best. Like just a plain dark navy, I think is so good with this olive. Um, 
we mentioned earlier about like different scales, right? So you can even have something with quite a fun and large motif like that, or even this. I think it's also worth pointing out with olives, olive doesn't necessarily sit that well with like kind of medium blues like this. I think it looks better with darks, dark colors like the olive above. This is kind of a, a lighter blue than that. And I much prefer this to this. See that? Um, other things also work well, as I mentioned before, the burgundy. Burgundy is lovely. Um, the yellows and oranges are really nice, especially champagne. You know, when you have a lot of somber colors together, you kind of want something that has a lot of life to it. And I really like champagne for that reason. It's also a surprisingly rare color. So here's the champagne. That's lovely. And here is that kind of honey orange that we saw earlier. And then finally, here's the burnt orange. Also very nice. I will give you guys one last little wild card, just because I really like it. In fact, I really like it this way. Like with the, with that denim blue hundred hands fabric we saw earlier, with this, you know what, with this, actually I kind of want to do the darker gray. Yeah, let's do that. The darker, almost charcoal, the olive, that blue shirting, and then silver. Silver is actually surprisingly nice with this olive. It's not something you might think of immediately, but that's pretty cool. Silver in general is a little underrated, actually. People don't really use silver nearly as much as they used to. I mean, like when you wear a charcoal suit and it's for your wedding or it's for something important, like silver is always a great kind of power color. You know, it's like eye catching, but very like serious and sharp. Alrighty, um, that is about it for now. Uh, this was really fun. Like it's fun to kind of just look at fabrics alone and not have to deal with complete products. I feel like doing it this way gives us a lot of freedom to play as well. And I hope you guys can use your imagination a little bit and just kind of imagine, oh, how this outfit might actually look as a complete thing. Alrighty, so Model 3 Sport Coat in Olive. Hope that was very helpful to you. Thank you for watching.